Congratulations, this is the result. Uh, uh, we spoke with Fabio now, he told uh, that he has no regrets because you played unbelievable, uh, huh? especially in the crucial uh, mm. moments in the end of the match. Uh, right. How do you feel about it? Wow, I mean, that, that means a lot. That means a lot. Um, I have a lot of respect for him and his game and, and, and what he brings to the court. Uh, so for him to say that, uh, it means a lot. I thought, I mean, I thought that, so just the difference was really small moments and maybe I played just a little bit better on a handful of moments and that, that was the match. You've, you've played him before, obviously, so you know kind of what he brings to mm. a, a court, but how difficult is it to kind of keep your own focus when everything right. else is going on down the other end? Uh, I mean, it can be challenging, but I have a hard enough time anyway, <laughs> just in general. So throw some of the some of the breaks in there and things like that, and you know, it's just kind of par for the course, really. But uh, you know, I, I like um, some of the flair he brings to the court and the matches, and, and I enjoy that. And so we seem to bring out good tennis from each other, and we play some entertaining matches. Not exactly as what happened at the end of the first set because I just saw a time violation when he was serving. I, I don't, didn't understand what happened with the towel. There was a problem with the towel, a ball boy, or I mean, what happened? And then there was another warning and then a penalty point. Can you describe what happened? Because it was difficult to um, understand. I, I don't know if I'm the right one person to ask. I'm not really sure what happened, to be honest. It just seemed like, I don't know. I really didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. It seemed like, I don't know, I guess in the tiebreaker you got a warning for time, I think. Yeah, and I, I hadn't been looking at the clock, so I didn't really know what time it was. I know that we were both, uh, the points were getting really physical at the end of the first set. I know that. So my legs were starting to burn. I was feeling it. And, and uh, so I, I'd have to imagine that his were too. And so I didn't really know what was going on or what the time was or anything like that. I was trying to keep my head above water. Um, and then, I don't know. Between, between the first and second set, I really don't know what was going on. Was there was just some breaks point. and some times and, and restroom, and I don't know. I, it was odd. You know, it was, I didn't really know what was going on. I was just trying to stay focused. Tennis, you were, you were saying to the umpire that you know, there's one rule for one and one rule for another. Is mm. that, you think you I just, it seemed odd, you know. <clears throat> he, uh, it seemed odd that we probably were already at time for, between the first and second set. And then there was a bathroom break, and I was like, well, it already would have been time. If you needed to go to the bathroom, you would have... And not to say that he didn't need to go to the bathroom or anything like that, but it just seemed like we were dragging on for no real reason, and I would have liked to have seen the ref kind of be a little bit more forceful for what the times actually were, you know. We have a set amount of time and breaks and things like that, so, yeah. I, I don't know, though, but it... Um, like I said, I was just trying to keep my composure and, and stay focused. And yeah, sometimes I uh, can mouth off a little bit as far as speaking my mind um, as a way to vent. You know, I was getting a little frustrated at, at why we weren't playing yet. So I, I, I used that time to, to vent. Maybe I made sense, maybe I didn't. I, I don't know. you as well? Uh, I was already pretty fired up, honestly. I was feeling good. I felt like I played well at the end of the first set, and and I was able to carry that into the into the second, thankfully. Um, but I was I was ready to get after it, you know. You made 15 points in a row. Sorry. Go. Ahead. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you made 15 points in a row after that situation. Really? You're, you're it seemed like he, his blister. Long. It seemed like he was having some blister issues as well. His play dropped a little bit to start the fourth set. Uh, sorry, the second set. Um, it wasn't just my good play, it was why I got up 4-0. So it's one of those, you know, it's a roller coaster with him sometimes, you know. Sometimes you're just a passenger with what's going on. He doesn't play well, and then all of a sudden he's playing amazing and you're kind of stuck with your hands in your pockets like, shoot, <laughs> I'd like to play tennis too <laughs> out here. Um, so I was just, that that second set was kind of quintessential, um, Fabio, with how, how it can go down, you know. And, and so even though it was 4-5 and I'd lost five games in a row, I thought, well, at least I'm still on serve, not in a hole or anything like that, and I'm up a set, so maybe try to screw your head on right and, and keep fighting. You're now 5-2 and two against top 20 guys that slams, which is like a better winning percentage than better has. <laughs> uh, how do you, how? how? 
Oh, I tend to lose to guys before I play. <laughs> they, their record, their, the amount of matches that they've played against guys that are top 20 and top 10 is silly. And so I haven't played that many. And you're ahead of like Medvedev, you're ahead of Zverev, you're ahead of a mm. lot of people who've been a lot higher ranked and made a lot more money than you. Yeah. Um, how, sure. what, what it makes you, when you do get these occasions, what's made you been able to capitalize so frequently? Uh, maybe because I haven't had that many, honestly, or I haven't had that many looks, or I wasn't supposed to, or, you know, maybe I shouldn't be here, you know, so the fact that I am, uh, I get kind of amped up, you know, and I, I want to perform and I want to do well, and I don't want to take the time on the court for granted. Um, getting to play on a big stadium, getting to play in front of a lot of people, because uh, I've played a lot of tennis in front of very few people. So the fact that I get to do that um, seems to bring out the best tennis in me. And, and it seems as if I, if I play pretty well that I have a shot. And, and with the way that I serve and you know some of the, the offensive, defensive skills that I bring to the table it seems to translate decently in some of these bigger matches. So. What would you think of playing better or not? <laughs> record well um it would be re very special very special um i was kicking myself that i lost uh to a too good sam query at wimbledon in the round of 16 because i would have played rafa in the quarters and that would have been really special and, and i was a little upset that i wasn't able to get to that match um so obviously they're still in dog fight um but it would be incredibly special to be able to play him at least once in my career and to play him on a on a big stage like quarters of a slam, um, you know, it'd be a ton of fun, really. And if it is Fuchs Vix, it'd be two guys outside top 16 right. in a quarter. He's really good. He's good. I mean, geez, he's so balanced and hits the crud out of the ball. Um, you know, either one's going to be extremely tough. I, I'm, I'm more, I'm less the favorite in, in one of those matchups against Roger, but I feel like I'm the underdog in both of those matchups, I, I think, so. The bathroom break rules are open to abuse, really. But do you think what Fabio did tonight was did he cross a line or? Uh, no, I don't think he crossed a line. I just, I know I've 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 gotten time violations for being in the bathroom too long, and I had like between sets, and they gave me the change over time. This is an ATP 250, and I had the literally the change over time to go to the bathroom, and I got a warning when I came on the court like 30 seconds late. So I, I don't know. It just seems like. It can be subjective at times. There's not like an objective set rule on times between breaks and bathroom breaks and things like that and medical timeouts and going off the court and staying on the court. And so it becomes tricky, you know, but no, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't go that far at all, no. You a moment ago used the phrase, I shouldn't be here. Mm. And I'm just wondering if you could explain a little bit what you mean by that. Is it that you say you're you're sort of still surprised when you make it to this point of a Grand Slam tournament? Or what? I'm just wondering what... I think to clarify is that I, I wasn't supposed to be here. You know, I spent a lot of time in my career not sniffing these opportunities. Um, and so there are better players than me that, <clears throat> that I played with in Futures and Challengers that have stopped playing because they just ran out of money or, or got injured or something like that. So the fact that I was blessed enough to... Uh, keep hold of my dream and to be able to try and fulfill it and have the body to do so and, and the opportunities uh, definitely blessed so um, it's worked out um, pretty well but there's definitely a, a, a world where it, it didn't work out you know it, some of the margins were pretty small for me to have some of these opportunities so definitely don't take it for granted just take that a little bit further, just because your career has been so incredible where you've been very close to being financially strapped. You've played time and again in very, shall we say, minor venues with mm. virtually no one watching. Yep. And then you have these breakthroughs, these runs. What What do you say to yourself, or how do you assess that? that I feel thing? more used to it now, um, having had some more success and some, some runs at slams and winning matches. and. Uh, but definitely like the first six months, year where I was getting into main draws of slams and playing more ATPs, I was struggling to like get the best out of myself. I felt inferior in, the, in those moments, like I was less of a player than I actually was. And so just getting the confidence to believe in myself and to believe that 
I do actually belong um, on on this stage is is crucial for for competing. I mean, if you don't feel like you should be there, then <laughs> you're probably not going to play very well. So getting that confidence uh, over time has helped a lot. Firmly now, has that sort of been? I I wouldn't say firmly. Confidence is never firm, but. But my core belief is definitely a lot higher than it used to be. Sometimes you thought you might not make it. I remember today that you were the other guy in the Marcus Willis video. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious what your memories That's of that one. are. Because that would not have, I don't know, I wouldn't have left that match feeling great. That's a good one. Um, I did not feel great after that one. He downed an RC Cola and a Snickers and took me out. And uh, I was doing everything I could to try and get better and try and move on. And, um, you know, he's a heck of a player, though, you know. He's not to be trifled with. But, yeah, I've got a few of those where it's like, what are you doing? You know, are you ever going to, is this ever going to be worthwhile, you know? So then it, you shift the focus, right? It's not about the successes or money or winning. It's about, you know, who you're trying to be and, and how you're going about your craft and are you doing the things that you should and are you finding fulfillment outside of those successes because if they're few and far between but you're trying to get the best out of yourself, what do you hold on to? Certainly isn't the money, certainly isn't the glamour. It's, you know, putting your hard hat on and, and getting work done and trying to be the best you you can be and, and trying to believe that that will pay off in some form or fashion down the road. Does, you don't know what that's going to look like but you hope that it's, that it's enough to sustain you and that mentality can get you places, I think. Snickers route, though? You know, I do like Snickers, but uh, not on the court during a match, maybe before, like, a practice or something. But uh, not recently, though. I've tried to stay away from you know, trying to eke out that last, like, 1% or 2%, and Snickers isn't on the menu for that. I don't think Novak's having any Snickers.